Hey guys, how's it going? Today I'll be talking about macros. This video is intended towards uh, macros that I've written or however, I mean, really can apply it to any macros that you may be looking towards now or future writing, uh, but mostly for automation in mind. Now, I've written a short FAQ page on my GitLab page, uh, which I'll throw the link uh, down at the bottom of the description. Uh, however, I wanted to make a video just to go that extra mile with it. So, uh, in this first part, we'll go ahead and start with the basics, you know, of how to add a macro. So all you really need to do is look down at your bottom uh, hot bar here, and then just click on it, any empty box. Then, in the top part, you want to put in whatever you want to call this macro. Uh, let's just hit some keys. Uh, and then, within the type, uh, there's two types of macros that you can run. You can either run a chat macro or a script macro. If you select the chat macro, all your character is going to do is basically just spit out that chat. If you have a whole lot of line of code, much like, let's grab this other macro that I've written here. All it's going to do is just spit it out in chat, and it's not actually going to run the macro. What you need to do is select script instead. Then from here, you know, you just go ahead and hit execute macro. And it will go ahead and uh, run that for you. Now, if you've been playing around with some macros for a while and wanted to write a macro that updates, let's say, another player's light source, um, or you wanted to also do that to the target or add an icon to them, you're going to run into some issues. Uh, to get around this, you're going to need to uh, write what's called a callback or GM macro. And what this does, you can either use Furnace or you can write a little bit more code. Uh, to fully write out the arguments, but Furnace is just a lot easier to use. It shortcuts everything, makes everything nice and sweet for you. Uh, so, as you can see here in my example, I already have a pre-written macro here to get the user's target, and then to update that target's dim light to 60. Now, normally, this is what you're going to have happen when you try invoking that. It's going to tell that the user lacks permission to update that particular token. Uh, so as I said, to get around this, you're going to need to use a callback macro, and now I'll give you an example of what one of those is. Now here's an example of that token update that uh, the player would need to use in their macro in order to update that enemy token to give them the dim light. Uh, so what we would need to do here is make sure that the macro, once you install uh, Furnace, it'll give you this option uh, when you uh, enable advanced macros uh, to execute a macro as a GM and then a checkbox. Now, in order for this to even work, the GM does need to be logged into game. Uh, so we're going to run this as an async method with an await. So right here, it's going to be canvas tokens get and then args uh, zero. Uh, so that's going to be the, the first uh, argument that you're going to pass. And then we're going to be passing an update, which is going to be the second argument. So from here you can see that I've already added in the callback macro into this example. So you can see here that it's token update equals game.macros uh, get name, and then the name of the macro here. And then under that you saw the target. However, now our execute's different. Now we're executing through this let line and then uh, with the dot execute and we're grabbing the target ID. Now it's smart to grab only IDs or names of what you're trying to, how you're trying to pass your target because then you can just let the other macro either get the canvas or get the actor by those IDs and you don't have to send a bunch of data. A lot of times what'll happen is you'll actually uh, throw yourself into a data loop if you try sending the whole uh, token itself in there. So just just send the ID. Uh, then from there, we're passing along the dim light and we're going to make it equal 9000. Uh, if you wanted to pass more arguments, uh, you can also 
keep adding on more things and then on your callback macro you'll just assign it uh, higher arg uh, argument numbers so let's go ahead and run this macro and then let's go ahead and check out the other side so now that we're on our game master side let's go ahead and open up this this token let's go in here let's go to the vision and the dim light radius is uh, now 9,000. So in this case, we're able to update it uh, completely using that callback macro. This is my GitLab page. Um, I've got a lot of macros in here for 5e as well as uh, some stuff for specific modules that I've been working with uh, that uh, you know, either people in the uh, Discord have asked, like, oh, hey, how do you do this? And I'm like, oh, you know, actually, that macro might be kind of handy. I might want to hold on to that. Uh, so usually within there, I'll hold on to some stuff. So let, let's look over a, uh, a basic macro that I've written in here. So here, so here's a macro uh, that I get commonly asked about is Divine Smite. And I took this off of uh, uh, Tim's page uh, for MIDI and kind of reshaped it a bit, added some more things to it. And uh, for here, basically this version of it, I have a, a little bit different version on my, uh, on my Patreon page that actually grabs it a bit different. But I mean, this is the, uh, the, the current version that's on my GitLab page. Uh, but anyway, uh, for macros like these, you really want to run them through item macro. And I also, uh, make notes and these little comments here that uh, always you should pay attention to um, I get a lot of questions as far as like you know uh, it's dealing double damage or it's just not working uh, so from here let's go ahead and implement this spell uh, into uh, how it should be done so we're just gonna grab all the text uh, cop, you know, hit Control C on your keyboard, and then let's go in game. Okay, so from here you can see I've quickly created Divine Smite on this goblin, and uh, I went ahead and already pre-set up. So we're doing it as an action. There's no duration, so we don't need to worry about that. Uh, utility type, uh, you know, uh, we can set that as the attack mode, uh, and then from there, uh, everything. So you'll see where it says on use macro, you want to type in item macro, it, it is case sensitive. If you don't have this line, you definitely need to go into the configure settings, go to the MIDI uh, workflow settings, and then in here go under workflow and make sure that add call to on use is checked and enabled. And then after that you want to you know, save, save here, save there, and then you should, and then reopen up the item and this line should be here. Now, uh, out, up at the top, you'll see where it says item macro, and then uh, pop in the code, and then after that, just go ahead and save it, and it should work. Now, if there are issues uh, that you may have, you may need to go into, uh, I've seen some times where uh, you have to go into uh, item macro and uncheck both of these boxes. Uh, sometimes it'll cause variables not to pass. Uh, on that, I just leave them unchecked in general. Um, and it just makes things work through either day or our uh, you know, MIDI options. So let's go ahead and uh, show this off. Let's damage our player. Actually, I want to make note how much... Uh, well, actually, let's just go ahead and just drop another goblin. And uh, we can have uh, goblins uh, beating each other up. So from here, click on Divine Smite. Now we're gonna just do it as a normal roll. And uh, yeah, you rolled like shit. Uh, one point. Uh, but yeah, as you can see here, it dealt the damage correctly and everything worked. So again, uh, using item macro, uh, pop the macro in here, make sure that you grab all the text, uh, toss it in there. Make sure down here where it says on use, you pop that in there. Um, if I stipulate that you need to remove damage from it, you need to remove damage from it. Um, you know, double check this. Make sure to read the comments on it. 
and uh, there is usually I will always make the macro do the brunt and the work because uh, why why do you need to do that part let the macro do everything for you it's much easier that way uh, and then from there let's go ahead and head on to the uh, other part of our macros <laughs> So now we'll be covering dynamic active effects. Now in this part, uh, we're gonna go ahead and use hold person for an example. With this setup, uh, we're gonna go into day and you're gonna go ahead and create the active effect for it. And in my notes, typically on my website for GitLab, I will always indicate how it should be ran. So set the duration for a repeat at end of each turn. Tab save until with 16 or whatever your uh, whatever your spell DC, but a lot of times the macro itself will also grab what the item DC is, as indicated here. And then in the next line you want to add uh, paralyzed to it. much like shown here. So you just kinda wanna duplicate what I've already pre-written. Then again, we're also using item macro because it's the simplest way how to put it in. If you wanna use your own external macro, then you would just need to simply put in, grab this, drop it down, choose macro execute, then you would need to specialize, uh, put in the macro name, so hold a person, and then whatever arguments you want to apply. So from here, you can see that I've already placed in the macro uh, from my GitLab page. And for this one, it actually does grab concentrating and uh, auto terminates it when the, when the target has made uh, their saving throw. The, the cool thing with the uh, with midis concentrating, I highly suggest that you disable uh, Cubs enhanced concentrator and switch over to midis uh, concentrator and use that instead. Uh, because effects like these, like let's say whole person, that are based upon the concentration, when the concentration terminates, it also actually rips the effect off of your target. Uh, so with the paralyzation, that will automatically be removed when the concentration itself is removed. So that's kind of a cool uh, little uh, pro tip for you guys uh, that are writing a lot of uh, day macros. And again, I'll also put links in the description to my Patreon as well as my GitLab page and you can uh, check out my stuff. Uh, thanks so much for the people that have been supporting me and I'll catch you guys uh, later.